What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about something that's fairly new to me really, but I've really spent a lot of time with it the last couple years and it's been one of my favorite techniques for offshore fish. You know, there's a couple different ways to fish this bait and that's going to be just a big hair jig. You know, there's a bunch of different models out there, but you just want a big white bucktail hair jig and it looks like a big shad out there under the water. Now, you know, there's a couple different ways to fish this bait. I'm gonna take you through them, the equipment that I like to use. And maybe, if we're lucky, we might even be able to catch a bass here right over my shoulder here. There's a couple biting back there. So, if you guys are ready, let's jump in and I'll give you a run through on what I like to do with a hair jig. Alright, so you know after the bass spawn they want to move out deep and get a little bit you know a little bit deeper water feed up on shad and with electronics being so good nowadays everybody finds the same fish you know they get highly pressured they see all kinds of crankbaits you know they get crankbaits drug over them all day and these crankbaits you know they make a lot of noise and they make a lot of commotion and those fish just get conditioned to that and in turn they don't want to bite you know they'll just hear that sound and they just shut down then you know you throw finesse baits and you can catch a few but still it just never gets them really fired up and feeding like they do on a hair jig so after those fish are highly pressured i like to throw it all the time because it generally seems to target a little bit bigger fish but it's just one of the best baits to imitate a big shad whenever you're fishing a little bit deeper water so the equipment's very important in how the whole thing works. We're gonna start down with the rod. This is a hundred dollar rod. You don't need a big, you know, high dollar rod for this technique. So I have a favorite Defender series. This is a seven foot five medium heavy. So it's a pretty long rod. You can make really long casts with this bait and uh, move a lot of line whenever you need to set the hook or something like that. 7.5 medium heavy. It's a fairly moderate medium heavy, so it really loads up well on a big long cast and drives that hook home into the fish. I got a favorite Soleus XCS reel right here. That is an 8.1 to 1 gear ratio. You want a fast gear ratio to move a lot of line, which we'll get into a little bit more here once we get the bait in the water. And you'll see exactly why you need that faster reel. I like 15 pound Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon helps the bait sink and not come up to the surface too much and then you just want a hair jig you know there's a bunch of different brands a bunch of different jigs you can make your own um, there, there's no real wrong jig to throw i like something heavy you know i like something over a half ounce half five a's three quarter one ounce just depending on the depth of water you're fishing but that's what i like to throw you want white maybe a little flash involved in there but the most important thing is you want a good hook because you may hook into a you know six seven eight ten pounder who knows so you want a good strong hook that'll handle those big fish all right let's get up on the front make a few casts and i'll show you the retrieve and maybe we can catch a couple bass So like I said, you're going to want to make as long as cast as possible. And when you first throw it out there, just let it sink all the way to the bottom. So I like to hold my rod tip up like this, and it leaves a bow in my line. And whenever it hits the bottom, that bow will go slack. So you'll know exactly when that bait's on the bottom. Now after it hits the bottom, you want to give it, you know, four or five, six cranks of the reel. And that's kind of basically just straightening out your line to that bait. Again, now I'm keeping my rod at, you know, what would that be? 10 o'clock position. You want it up just a little bit, but you still want it down. So my bait's sitting on the bottom right now. All right, so I give it a few cranks and just let it flutter back down. Keep that rod that same angle, and you're watching your line and you're feeling for a bite as that bait's sinking. So you, you give it a few cranks and just let it sink back down to the bottom. 
And those fish usually hit it on that fall back down to the bottom. So you'll know it's back on the bottom when your line goes slack or you'll even feel it hit the bottom sometimes. You know, depending on the weight of your hair jig, it may take a little bit longer to hit the bottom. But generally, like I said, that bite happens. There he is. Oh, nope. As soon as you stop winding and it starts sinking, that's usually when that bite happens. Now, it is a little frustrating because they will, they will hit it a lot. You'll get a lot of bites that don't hook up. You know, if there's a lot of bass around up on a, a ledge or something like that, they will be nipping at it, headbutting it, hitting it the whole time. And it's, you know, super important to just keep working that bait as if you never had a bite. And eventually, they keep popping it, eventually one's gonna swallow it and it's gonna be a big one. Now, when you do get a bite, like I said, you don't want to jerk a real hard hook set. You just want to pretty much just start winding like you're trying to rip it back off the bottom again and let that rod do all the work for you. Let it load up. And then once it loads up and gets tight, you can kind of set back and set the hook and drill that hook home. So really that's one way to do it. Now, there is another way you can fish this bait and it's simply just dragging it on the bottom, almost like you would a football jig. There's a lot of big fish that get caught just dragging this slow across the bottom. You know, that, that if you look down in the water here, you'll see that fur just bounces around and it flashes a little bit and it just looks beautiful. And those fish can't resist it. Well, we had them fired up there for a minute, but we stopped to talk and it seems like they kind of shut down. They don't really want to bite anymore. Kind of making a liar out of me, so you guys probably don't trust anything I say anymore, right? Now, hopefully you guys learned something about fishing a hair jig. I'd love to hear your opinion or if you do anything differently. Like I said, I'm always learning. So if you guys have any tips, any hints, any tricks, leave them down in the comments below. Like I said, I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned. You know, I got a bunch more tips and a bunch more fishing content coming on this channel. So if you guys haven't subscribed, please do that. And until then, we'll see you guys next time.